What you're seeing right now is never before seen footage of the Titan sub's tail cone resting on the ocean floor. This is just one of the many shocking things uncovered during a recent U.S. Coast Guard hearing about OceanGate. Among the revelations were haunting audio transcripts, including the final messages, all good here at 10.16 a.m., followed by dropped two weights at 10.47 a.m. Then, nothing. We also learned of the Titan malfunction days before the doomed voyage. But before we discuss these new revelations, let's quickly recap the tragic incident that led to this disaster. On June 18th, 2023, five men boarded a small submersible called Titan to visit the Titanic wreck site, sitting nearly 13,000 feet below the ocean surface. For your know, the Titanic wreck is about 3,800 meters down, almost four times the height of the tallest skyscrapers. That's where they were heading. And the people on board? Well, it wasn't just anybody. There was Suleiman, a 19-year-old who was nervous about the whole thing, but went along to please his dad, Shahzada Dawood, a British-Pakistani businessman from one of the richest families in Pakistan. He had gifted this trip as a Father's Day present. Then you had Hamish Harding, a British billionaire and adventurer, someone who was no stranger to taking big risks. And alongside them was Paul-Henri Narjale, a French Navy veteran and Titanic expert. Last but not least, the man behind the mission himself, Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate, the company responsible for the Titan. Stockton wasn't just the organizer, he was also the visionary behind this whole deep sea exploration business. Dives to the Titanic aren't as rare as you might think. Since 1985, over 200 people have visited the wreck, including Titanic director James Cameron, who went 33 times. Titan had been making these dives since 2021, and by all accounts, this trip was supposed to be routine. But about an hour and 45 minutes into its descent, the sub lost communication with its surface ship, the Polar Prince. That's when the alarms went off, and soon, the entire world was watching as a massive search operation unfolded. Tragically, all five passengers aboard perished. Stockton Rush, OceanGate's CEO, was a visionary, Born in 1962, he grew up with dreams of space exploration, but shifted his focus to the deep sea when becoming an astronaut wasn't possible. In 2009, he co-founded OceanGate, aiming to make oceanic tourism accessible. OceanGate's first sub, Antipodes, could dive 1,000 feet, but Stockton wanted to go deeper. In 2013, he helped to develop Cyclops, a sub that could reach 1,640 feet but it wasn't enough for his ultimate goal of diving to the Titanic. In pursuit of this, he pushed forward with Titan, made of carbon fiber and titanium, a risky design choice for deep sea exploration. Unlike steel or solid titanium used in traditional subs, carbon fiber hadn't been tested at the extreme depths required. Worse, Titan had a cylindrical shape, which is less effective at handling underwater pressure than the standard spherical design. Despite concerns from OceanGate's senior engineer David Lockridge and other experts, Stockton dismissed warnings, firing Lockridge in 2018 after he raised serious safety issues. In 2021, Titan made its first successful dive to the Titanic, and more followed in 2022. Despite the concerns, Stockton's vision pushed on. But on June 18, 2023, Stockton, along with passengers Paul Henri Nargiolet, Hamish Harding, and the Dawoods, set off for the Titanic and never returned. After several days of searching, debris from the sub was found near the Titanic, confirming it had imploded under immense pressure, killing everyone instantly. OceanGate has since suspended all operations, and the company has gone silent. The passengers, aware of the risks through a waiver that mentioned death, still trusted Stockton's creation. Yet, the sub and their faith in its safety ultimately failed. That's the background of the OceanGate disaster. Now let's dive into the new shocking updates that just came out. When the Titan first went missing, there was mass confusion. Nobody really knew what had happened. All we had were rumors, theories, and even a fake transcript that circulated online. People were guessing left and right, trying to piece together a timeline. But it wasn't until the Coast Guard began their official investigation on September 16th, 2024, that we finally started to get real answers. The hearing, especially, shed light on the actual events, not just from a technical perspective, but from a human one. The Coast Guard didn't just offer cold, hard facts. They gave us an eerie, minute-by-minute -minute breakdown of the sub's final journey, 
making the whole event feel much more real and devastating. Let's dive into the animation first. It was built using real data from the Titan systems and logs, combined with the communications between the sub and the polar prints on the surface. From the moment the Titan was launched on June 18th, 2023, the animation traces its descent to the Titanic wreck site, thousands of meters below the surface of the ocean. You see the polar prints releasing the Titan into the water, and then the sub begins its slow journey downward, sending intermittent messages back to the surface. At first, everything seemed to be going fine. The submersible reported back its depth as it descended, and the polar prints acknowledged the updates. The transcripts, which were displayed alongside the animation, show that communication was regular, although a bit unreliable at times, which wasn't unexpected. They were using what's known as an acoustic modem, a system that communicates by sending signals through water. These signals take the form of clicks and pings that relay short bits of data, so it's not like the sub and the surface ship were chatting back and forth. Instead, the messages were basic. Depth updates, comm checks, that sort of thing. One of the early messages from the Titan is straightforward, descending through 235 meters, which the Polar Prince confirms. That means the Titan had dropped to about 770 feet at that point. This exchange continued, with the sub giving updates every few minutes. But the deeper they went, the more unreliable the communications became. That's where things start to get unsettling. The transcript reveals that as the Titan approached the halfway point of its descent, the crew reported that they had dropped two weights. Now, to anyone not familiar with submersible operations, this might sound alarming, but it's actually a standard procedure. Dropping weights allows the sub to control its descent, especially as it gets closer to the ocean floor. The idea is to prevent a hard landing when reaching the wreck site. At this point, there's no indication that anything was wrong. In fact, the crew aboard the Polar Prince likely didn't think twice about this message. But just seconds after that message was sent, all communication between the sub and the surface ship was lost. This is where the animation and transcript leave us hanging, and the next part is only theory, pieced together from the wreckage that was eventually discovered. The Coast Guard believes that shortly after the Titan dropped those weights, something catastrophic happened, likely an implosion of the sub's carbon fiber hull. The carbon fiber was always a controversial choice for a deep sea submersible, because while it's lightweight and strong, it hadn't been extensively tested at the kinds of depths the Titan was descending to. The Coast Guard's animation shows what happened after that final message. The Titan was descending at a steady rate when suddenly, it's believed that the hull failed. The pressure at nearly 13,000 feet down is unimaginable, over 5,500 pounds per square inch, and it only takes the tiniest flaw in the sub's structure for the entire thing to collapse in on itself. The animation doesn't show the implosion in detail. Of course, we can't know exactly how it looked. But what we do see is the sub's debris scattering on the ocean floor. The pieces were found around 500 meters from the Titanic wreck site. The Coast Guard also released footage from an ROV, remotely operated vehicle, that discovered the wreckage. This footage was crucial in confirming that the sub had indeed imploded, rather than having suffered some other kind of failure, like a slow leak or mechanical malfunction. The tail cone of the Titan, which housed the batteries and some communication equipment, was found relatively intact. This was a non-pressurized part of the sub, so it wasn't directly affected by the implosion. But the main pressure hull where the passengers were was completely destroyed. The ROV footage showed shattered pieces of carbon fiber and titanium scattered on the ocean floor, with parts of the hull pushed back into the rear titanium dome. This backs up the theory that the implosion started at the front of the sub and happened almost instantaneously. The most heartbreaking part of all this is what the transcript didn't show. Any sign of distress or panic. The last communication from the Titan was just a routine update about the dropped weights. There was no indication that the crew knew anything was wrong. Experts have said that an implosion at those depths would be so fast that the people on board wouldn't have had time to react. The brain processes information in milliseconds, but the implosion likely happened in even less time than that. In fact, one expert described it as mercifully instantaneous, meaning the passengers probably didn't feel any pain or fear. They wouldn't have known what was happening before it was over. What's even more haunting is that, according to the Coast Guard's investigation, the hull failure likely started at the junction where the carbon fiber was bonded to the titanium end caps. 
This was a design choice that had raised eyebrows from the start. And it was one of the concerns brought up by David Lockridge, the former OceanGate engineer who had been fired after raising safety concerns. During the Coast Guard hearing, David Lockridge testified about the numerous warnings he gave to CEO Stockton Rush about the dangers of using carbon fiber for deep sea dives. And did you have confidence in the way that the Titan was being built at this time? No confidence whatsoever. And I was very vocal about that and still am. And as an experienced engineer and operator of submersibles with over 25 years of experience, why do you think they dismissed your concerns? Cost cutting, um, bad engineering decisions. I'd say that's the, the two main things. Carbon fiber, while strong and lightweight, was largely untested for the extreme pressures experienced at the depths where the Titan was headed. Lockridge, who had years of experience with submersibles, felt uneasy about the material choice but his concerns were ignored. He was pointing out major flaws in the very construction of the vessel, and he believed these issues put lives at risk. When he voiced his concerns to Rush, the reaction was far from positive. Lockridge was effectively shut down, and after continued disagreements about the sub's safety, was eventually fired. But Lockridge wasn't the only one who had raised the alarm. Several experts from the Marine Technology Society also penned a letter to Rush, urging him to reconsider the design and materials used in Titan. They warned that his approach could lead to a disaster. Still, Rush pushed back. He believed that the industry's safety regulations were too restrictive and that innovation required risk. Rush's attitude was clear. Safety was important, but he saw it as secondary to pushing boundaries and achieving something groundbreaking. The consequences of ignoring these warnings were deadly. As it turned out, Lockridge and the other experts were right. The carbon fiber hull, coupled with the cylindrical design of Titan, posed significant risks. Most submersibles are designed with a spherical hull, which is far better suited to withstand the immense pressure of deep ocean environments. A cylinder, like the one Rush chose for Titan, was far more likely to buckle. And because carbon fiber and titanium expand and contract at different rates under pressure, the bond between the two materials was a potential weak spot from the start. One particularly concerning piece of testimony that came out during the hearing was about an incident involving Titan's predecessor, the Cyclops One. During a dive to the wreck of the Andrea Doria in 2016, Rush insisted on piloting the submersible himself, despite objections from Lockridge, who had more experience. According to Lockridge, Rush panicked during the dive and ended up driving the sub full speed into the wreck. Lockridge said that Rush's behavior was erratic, and at one point, Rush reportedly refused to hand over control of the sub, despite making mistakes. Tensions escalated inside the sub, with a client aboard, Renata Rojas, reportedly shouting at Rush to give Lockridge the controller. Eventually, Lockridge took over and managed to bring the sub back to the surface safely. However, Renata Rojas also testified during the hearing. Her account of the incident is very different from David Lockridge. I, I did see um, David's David Lockridge's uh, account of the events, and he must have gone on a different dive. Nobody was panicking, nobody was crying, and there was definitely no swearing and yelling. Now, Lockridge referred to Renata as a client, but it's important to know that she is a mission specialist for OceanGate. However, this title can be misleading. According to OceanGate, a mission specialist is a paying customer who, after their payment, could choose to either observe or take on more responsibilities as part of the crew. Another key detail is that Renata had a close, long-standing connection with Stockton Rush, so it's possible that she's downplaying the incident to defend the company and his friend. But if true, this story illustrates Rush's impulsive decisions and refusal to listen to those with more experience were major red flags. That incident wasn't an isolated one. In fact, Titan had suffered multiple issues during previous dives, some of which were revealed during the Coast Guard hearing. Just six days before the fateful June dive to the Titanic, the sub experienced a serious malfunction. According to Stephen Ross, a marine scientist who was aboard Titan for a dive on June 12, 2023, a platform malfunction caused the sub to tilt sharply, throwing all five passengers into the rear bulkhead. The cause was later identified as a problem with the variable ballast tank, which controls the buoyancy of the sub. There's nothing to hold on to inside the submersible, really, so it's a fairly smooth tube. The pilot crashed into the rear bulkhead, 
The rest of the passengers tumbled about. Uh, I ended up standing on the rear bulkhead. One passenger was hanging upside down and the other two managed to wedge themselves into the, uh, the bow end cap. Ross described the experience as uncomfortable and unpleasant, and the dive had to be aborted. No one was injured, but the event raised concerns about the sub's reliability. After returning to the surface, the malfunction took a considerable amount of time to fix. What's even more troubling is that this wasn't the first time Titan had faced technical issues. Ross also testified about a 2022 dive where a loud bang was heard while the sub was surfacing. The crew speculated that the noise was caused by a shifting of the pressure hull in its metal cradle. Another dive in 2022 revealed a malfunction with the sub's thrusters, where the controls became reversed while the sub was at the bottom of the ocean. These incidents, while not catastrophic, showed a pattern of recurring issues that should have raised serious red flags. Despite these problems, Titan continued to operate, with Rush at the helm, pushing the limits of what the sub could do. Despite these ongoing issues, Rush's confidence in the sub never seemed to waver. Ross testified that after one of the problematic dives in 2022, there wasn't a post-dive inspection of the hull, which was a concerning oversight. The lack of thorough checks after these incidents shows a troubling culture at Ocean Gate, one where rushing to the next dive took precedence over ensuring the safety of the vessel and its passengers. One of the major factors that allowed Titan to keep diving was the fact that it operated in international waters. Because of this, OceanGate wasn't subject to the same stringent safety regulations that submersibles must follow in domestic waters. This loophole gave Stockton Rush the freedom to continue operating the Titan, despite the safety concerns raised by his own staff and outside experts. Rush believed that the traditional regulatory process was too slow and restrictive, stifling innovation. But as the hearing has made clear, this lack of oversight played a critical role in the disaster. Since the Coast Guard hearing began, OceanGate has suspended all operations. Their website and social media accounts have gone offline, and it's uncertain what will happen to the company moving forward. Public outrage has been swift. The testimony, combined with the transcript of the Titan's final moments, has given us a much clearer picture of what happened. But it has also raised more questions. Could this tragedy have been prevented if Rush had listened to the experts? Why did the Titan continue to dive despite all the warning signs? The Coast Guard's investigation is still ongoing, and we can expect more revelations in the coming months. But one thing is certain. This tragedy wasn't a freak accident. It was the result of a series of avoidable decisions. The haunting realization that this disaster might have been prevented only makes it more devastating.